Hello, today I'm going to share with you how to use the four prong trivet. You'll need Joe Spencer's torch stand holder, uh, Joe's little tray and trivet set, you'll need your work surface. We chose a tile because it's easier to show in the video, a larger bowl with some water for cooling off the trivet, Joe Spencer's original bead pulling station with your lamp for the heat source, and I've chosen um, cherry pie today, the medium size. Um, you'll need a small copper shape. It can be any shape you want. It could be butterflies. This one happens to be a little gear. It can be circles. Uh, whatever your heart desires. Basically, I'll lay the little piece of copper onto the four prong trivet. I'll get ready by opening up my little mix. And we have a small sifter as well. So we'll go ahead and start by putting on the torch. You want about an inch and a half blue flame with a tail. You'll simply put your piece and rotate it. Getting it nice and hot. Switch hands on you all. And I'm going to go ahead and dip it in the water. Now this quenches the piece. And you'll notice that we have a lot of black particles on it. That's fire scale, and you definitely don't want fire scale on your piece. So now you have a nice clean piece. Put it back on your four prong. You want to make sure that you're moving your piece in circular motions. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise. It won't really matter. I don't ever work down here. I always work in the tail of the flame. This way you will not burn your enamel or have black spots, brown spots, or gray spots. Again, I'm using cherry pie, one of the new colors. When it gets nice and red hot, like as you're seeing now, it's starting to get nice and red hot. I bring it down and sift on a little enamel. I'll bring it upwards and slowly bring it down into the flame. I like to, uh, I always work both sides of my enamel and um, this helps it from cracking or just popping off. This particular piece, I'll probably do three coats on this side here, the back side, what I consider the back side. The back side meaning it's touching the flame. I'll go ahead and lower it and put on a second coat, nice and light and even. This does take a little practice. Um, like anything, practice makes perfect as much as you can, but this saves you a lot of time for those of you who might not have the um, time or money to buy a kiln. If you want to make earring components or bracelet components, necklace components, you can do so by using the four prong or three prong. And you notice how the enamel is getting nice and shiny like a lollipop. You definitely want that. Now at this point, the top two coats that I've done are my front side. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get it nice flame. You can see it's orange. I don't know if your camera can see how flat that is and how red it is. But I'm going to go ahead and shut off the kiln and bring my piece over to Joe Spencer's original bead pulling station. I'm going to go ahead and just Count about 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm just going to pop it 
and it's going to come out. Your pieces in there, you're going to take your trivet and get it nice and cool. I usually have a little towel here. Just let that there. Now you'll notice that this piece has your color on one side. There's two coats on there. And then you have a back side that's all black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let that cool off. As After it cools off, I'll go ahead and take it out and I'll sand that really nicely. And then I'll come back with part two of the video of how to finish up your piece. So this is part two. The little piece, I made an extra one just so I could show you. Um, I've carefully taken these out with tweezers. And you can see, look at all this fire scale that falls off. We don't want that in our enamel because it can flip off later. So basically these are cool enough now. And I'm just going to dump them in there. And you can see this is the side that we started the cherry pie on. We have two layers on here. And this is the side that had the fire scale on it. And the fire scale is pretty much off, but I like to sand it a little bit. This is just 240 everyday sandpaper. So I'm just going to head and sand it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect or bright shiny. It just has to get the fire scale off. So you see how nice that is? That one's pretty clean. I'm going to wash this one and sand it a little bit. You can use dry sandpaper or you can do uh, the wet sandpaper. And you could probably use about 240 to 100 would be great. I just happen to have 240 on hand. So now these two pieces are ready to be fired again. Um, basically what I'll be doing is I will dry them off. Again, this is the two coats of the cherry pie base. And then this is the side that we just cleaned with a piece of sandpaper. Um, I want to show you, this is all the fire scale whoops, that uh, came off of these two small pieces. And you don't want that in your artwork ever. Um, so I'll be coming back in a little bit with part three of how to use the four prong trivet to fire your little small pieces for earrings, bracelets, and necklaces. Okay, so we're back and as part two showed, we showed you the front part, which was two coats of cherry pie. On the back, we've already um, quenched it to get the fire scale off and we've sanded it. And now part three is going ahead and doing the top part. So we're going to take our little piece, put it right on the four prong trivet, start our torch. Again, you know, about one and a half inch part here, about three inches here. And you want to start up a little bit higher than normal because remember, you do have enamel that's already been torch fired. Um, and if you went, went ahead and put it way down here, it would break. It would just fly off and hurt you. This is where safety is very important. Um, always use either a mask, your glasses. Uh, and of course, I always use a, a mask when I'm torch firing. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that now because I won't be able to talk to you. I wouldn't sound right. <laughs> But uh, you get the idea. Work safe so you can have fun. Now you notice the piece is starting to turn a little uh, red. A little bit of um, flame orange going on it. That's what you want. Make sure you rotate your piece so that the heat is evenly distributed. We have our tray and our base coat of cherry pie over in the little tray. Bring it over. Put our first coat on nice and even. Go ahead and put it back into the flame. Like anything else, it does take practice. Um, it's like riding a bike, you just keep trying. I like to go counterclockwise and then go clockwise just so my arm doesn't fall asleep. But this is a great way for you to make little pieces and components for your jewelry and other projects that you're torch firing without having a kiln. Again, you see how beautiful we're getting that beautiful flame orange color. And you want that. That means that the enamel itself is adhering to the copper very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and put on another coat. If you put the enamel on too thick, it can bounce off and flake off. 
and it won't be even. Uh, you'll have one side of your piece thicker than the other and it looks very unprofessional. So the more even coats you can do and fire good in between them, the less chance of breakage or unevenness that you'll have. Now you've probably noticed that I have the base coat here in this tray and I have my frit mix in the other tray. The reason is these trays were designed by Joe so that you could save both your enamel base and your frit uh, and be able to put it away easily. And I'm going to demonstrate that after we get done with this component. So now we've already done two coats. I like to do a third coat. And on the third coat, you go ahead and put on a nice even coat. And then I bring it over here. I put on a few little pieces. I want a couple more there. There we go. Again, remember that your frit is bigger and you don't want it bouncing off of you. So you'll bring it high to the heat and let it warm up the little pieces of frit so they don't just jump off at you. And slowly lower it into where you would normally heat the base coat frits. It will take a little bit longer than it did for your base coat uh, for this particular coat because obviously now you have the frit which is thicker in mass. Just be patient and it will melt down and it does it relatively quickly. That's keeping in mind you have two coats of enamel on the bottom. You have your copper piece um, usually folks use 18 gauge because it's a nice gauge to work with and you've got two to three coats of your base coat on top with your frit mix. So it's a lot of uh, layers for this to heat. Now for some reason if it doesn't heat that would be a great indicator to you that your flame is not hot enough. However, you're starting to see the little frit pieces melt down now. Be sure to keep rotating. If you hold on, if you hold it in one place too long, it could make your enamel pull up into one area instead of evenly distributing across the copper piece. I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty, pretty even. And again, remember a little frit goes a long way. Uh, don't feel like you have to take all your frit and dump it on top and fill it from corner to corner because it does spread out. So now we have a nice glossy lollipop finish on top. I'm going to go ahead and get a really nice even. I want to make sure all my end edges are even. And it looks like they are. I'm going to pull away from the heat slowly to have it anneal a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and shut the gas off and slowly and carefully bring the four prong trivet over to the bead pulling station. Wait about 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just turn it over and hit it. And then, of course, you would have your bowl of water um, to put your little trivet into to cool off so you don't get burnt and then go ahead and leave your piece in for about an hour to cool off for its final cooling and annealing when you're done uh, if you have any rough edges you can use your 240 or 100 sandpaper a wet dry sandpaper works best under water for less cracking and then you'll be able to glue your pieces in or uh, put them around a cabochon or whatever you your heart desires Hi everybody, uh, some of you asked about the tray. What's the significance of uh, Joe Spencer's trays? Well, the idea that Joe had was that enamels are expensive, as most of you know, and they keep going up in price, and he hated waiting, his, wasting his enamel. So he made his trays so that when you got done, all you had to do was tap it gently, and all your enamels would go right back into your little container. It's the same with the um, Fritz is that you would just go like this and all your little pieces would go back in. And so usually I clean up my stuff as my pieces are cooling and I've pulled the little pieces out so that you can see it. And here's the beautiful little pieces that we made using the four prong trivet. 
Uh, the trivets come in three prong and four prong and each of them um, are great little tools to have especially if you don't have a kiln and you want to be able to make some beautiful pieces for your jewelry and other things you might make using enamels and copper or silver or brass. Well, thank you so much for watching today. Make sure you're safe, but have fun. Bye-bye.